What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here. Welcome back. When we last left off, I just created some placeholder art, and now we're going to work on uh, making our ship move around. So before we do that, let's pop open our room here. We already have room one, which is built into the game for us. I'm going to change some stuff here. I'm going to make this 1980 by 1080, or 1920 by 1080, sorry. Let's fix that, 1920. Now for the background layer, what we can do is that the room has different layers, so you can assign stuff. So by default, it comes with an instances layer, which is where we're gonna be placing all of our stuff, uh, like all of our, like our ship and other stuff like that. We can add more layers as we go, which we'll probably make use of later, but we also have a background layer. Now there's lots of cool stuff that we can do with the background and we might play with that a little later, but for now, all we're going to do is we're gonna set our sprite. We're gonna to go to our placeholder sprite and we're gonna choose placeholder background. Now obviously this doesn't cover the whole room here. So what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to horizontal tile and vertical tile. And there we go. We have a background, uh, a space background now. Now I could also modify this background to like add more frames to make it more varied and I can possibly, you know, pick different, uh, different animations for those. I'm not going to do that right now. We're probably going to do some cool stuff with it later where we do some more parallax background. So what that means is like, as I'm moving my, my ship, the background might move a little slower. And then I can probably also add more layers of like uh, uh, stars that move a little different as well. So you, have, so you have this cool parallax thing where it moves at a different speed. And that will be pretty easy to do, I think. So we'll, we'll do that later. But now we have a room. So let's save that and let's create an object. So I'm going to create a object. Now, for this, I'm not going to name this placeholder because we're, we're going to be able to use this. So I'm going to name this OBJ, and I'm going to name it OBJ Player Ship. And this is where we're going to do a lot of our stuff here. So I'm going to set our sprite to our placeholder ship sprite. And now we are going to do a, the create event. Now, the first time you do this in Game Maker, I just updated this before this video. It, it, it asks you if you want to do GML code or GML visual. Now, GML stands for Game Maker Language. Um, I'm going to use code. GML visual, I assume, is their old drag and drop stuff where it sort of visually, visually lets you code by piecing together logic pieces. And that's that's okay if you're just starting out, but... For me, I, I did start out on that and I found it to be a hindrance when I started learning code. So I'm gonna dive just, just into code and I'm gonna try to explain everything I'm doing as I go. Again, this series is not meant for like a follow along tutorial. You can follow along if you like, but this is just me making a game start to finish. So this is just to get insight on how I think of things, how I logic it out. And you know, in the comments, you guys could, you know, put your approaches in there and how they work for you. And just, it's going to be like a big collaborative sort of thing. You know, we can all talk about it. So I'm going to choose, don't ever ask again for this project. And I'm going to choose GML code. There we go. So now in, in the create event, now this, uh, every object, this is like where all your, your code goes. Uh, there's different events that an object has. So, the create event that we have here, as soon as this instance is created in, in a room, now you can have multiple instances of the same object, but as soon as this, uh, as soon as an instance of this object is created in, in a room, it will fire this event and run everything that's here. So this is typically where we um, set up some variables that we will need to use. Now, this thing I just did here, this green text that started by these double slash, this is what's called a comment. This is uh, very important. This is just for you as the developer. Uh, it's ignored by GameMaker entirely. 
It's uh, it's just basically so you can keep notes on what you're thinking. It's very important to use comments because I can't tell how many old projects I go into and I just have a bunch of code with no comments and I have no idea what I was thinking at the time. So typically how I use comments is I like to put what I'm thinking at the time or what I'm trying to accomplish with each little, little block of code. And that way, if I look at it later, I can see what I was thinking, and also if you work in a collaborative environment with other developers, they need to be able to know what you're trying to do as well. Because because with with programming, there's very rarely the way to do something. There's you know you put 20, uh, 20 programmers in a room and you give them a, a problem to solve, you're going to get twenty different solutions. This may not be the way to do something, but it is a way to do something. So. Don't worry about making mistakes. You'll just you'll just be paralyzed. <laughs> so just get in there, and make make those mistakes, and have fun. Just try to document what you're trying to do. That way, you can go correct it later once you find a better way to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be tackling movement. So movement variables. So how we're gonna need to do this is. I kind of want it to be like Escape Velocity Nova to where wherever your ship was pointing and you press W, that's that's where you would thrust to, that they would, it, it would apply force that way. And then as you turn, it didn't like turn like you're in a car. It would, it would just rotate your ship, but you're still drifting through space. So we're going to have to handle that. So uh, in my other video, I just set like speed equals like five or something. We're not going to want to use that. We're going to want to do something, uh, a different approach. So I'm going to make a variable called act speed. I'm going to make this something like 0 0.2. Um, I'm going to comment what I'm thinking with this acceleration speed. We want to gradually increase our speed when pressing W. So we don't want to just instantly go fast. We want to slowly go faster, right? We want to accelerate. We also want to make sure that we don't we don't just keep going uh, like infinitely fast. So we're going to want to add a max uh, speed, and I'm going to make that just ten. Now the variables here, the values here, are just basically pixels per uh, how many pixels you move in a step, which we're going to get into the step later. Uh, very shortly, in fact. So we've got max speed. The maximum speed at which this ship can travel. So we've got acceleration speed and max speed. We also want to uh, determine how fast our ship can, can rotate or turn. So we're going to add turn speed. And I'm going to make this something like 5 for now. Again, I'm probably going to tweak these values once we get something working and, and uh, we test it out. And what this will let me do is that this will let me, you know, say if I buy a bigger ship later in the game, you know, maybe it might accelerate slower. It might turn slower. It probably has a slower max speed. It's not going to be as fast as this little racer ship that we've got here. So this lets me dynamically control all of that here without having to go in my lines of code and edit each individual value. I can set this this here once and use it. So the rate at which the ship can turn. So we've got that. I think that works okay. Now, in Escape Velocity Nova, in order to stop, you would have to actually turn your ship around and face the opposite direction that you were traveling and then thrust the other way. And I think that that was a cool idea, but it was very difficult. So I want to add the ability to decelerate. So I'm going to do deck speed equals. I want to make this something like 0 0.1. Like it's, it's going to be slower. Like, it should be faster to turn around and just thrust the other direction to, to slow down. But you should also be able to just slow down slowly on your own and slowly come, come to a halt. So, um, the speed at which the ship will decelerate. I don't know if that's a word, but we're using it. Um, when pressing S. Ship can turn when pressing A or D. 
There we go. So we've got some variables here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another event called the step event. Now this is where like all the magic happens for making games. Now in Game Maker Studio 2, the step event by default tries to run at about 60 times per second. Whatever your game speed is, is set to, that's typically how often your step event is going to run. Now there are some factors that can affect that, such as like a computer performance, like if it's lagging, you might not get the, the full 60 in uh, a second. And there are some steps that we can take to solve that later, but I don't think this game is gonna be big enough to run into that problem. So if it does, we will we'll fix it later. But for now, just keep in mind that Game Maker will run everything in the step event like 60 times per second. Uh, older versions of Game Maker, I think, default to 30. So you can think of it like FPS, but they're not quite the same. It's not quite one to one. So just be a little wary of, uh, of that comparison. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tackle movement. Now, let's see. What I want to do is I want to check if I'm pressing the W key, which is how I'm gonna accelerate. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an if statement. Now, everyone thinks that computers are super smart. They're not, they are really dumb. They only do exactly what you tell them to do. And that's where a programming language like GML comes into, uh, comes into play here. You have to tell them exactly what you want them to do. And we do that a lot with like if statements. So it's basically your, com your computer playing the what if game really, really fast. So we're gonna do if, and then you have whatever you're uh, trying your expression or like whatever your condition is in, in, in parentheses here. And then you have a bracket after and anything in these brackets, it's basically if something happens, then do this. So it's basically just like this. If something uh, happens, do this. That's sort of like what it's like. Now this isn't real code, but this is just how it works. Uh, it's how you can conceptualize it. So what we wanna check is if we're pressing the W key. Now, how do we do that? I know how, but if other people don't, Game Maker has a really good help manual and what we can do is that we can look up, uh, look at that, it has a keyboard check thing already. So GameMaker, the engine has a bunch of built-in functions that do a lot of stuff for you. Think of it like having a really big toolkit. So this is just a tool that, that we can use here. So keyboard check key. So with this function, you can check to see if a key is held down or not. Awesome. There's also variations like keyboard check pressed or keyboard check released. So you can fire certain uh, uh, code and, and events that happen there. Now, if we look at keyboard input down here, they offer a bunch of keys for us to use already, but I want to use the W key. So what they have is they actually have another function here called ORD which let, just basically translates a, a, a Unicode character, like a letter to a key on your keyboard. So we can use this in Game Maker here. So I can just do if keyboard check. And the key th th that I wanna check for is gonna be ORD. And I wanna make sure to, to make this readable here. So the key that we're gonna check for is our W key. So we've got if keyboard check, ORD W. Now I, I added these spaces here so you can kind of see what we're doing. So inside of our uh, initial parentheses here, we're just checking if the W key is pressed. And ORD is just translating this W to a, a key on my keyboard and it's checking if that key is pressed. So let me condense this down a little bit. Boom, boom, there we go. So now that we have this checked, what do we want to do? So normally what I would do is I would do something like I would say my speed will plus equals. Now speed here is, 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 is in green. This is a built-in variable that GameMaker already has that just applies to, to this object here. So speed is basically how fast it's gonna be moving across the uh, screen. 
And then direction is another variable that just determines like what direction you're going to be moving in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do speed plus equals x speed. And what this plus equals do is that this will take whatever the current value of speed is, and it's going to add acceleration speed to it. So since our acceleration speed is 0.2, that means the first time this event fires, it's going to be it's going to set speed to 0.2 and the next time it's going to take whatever speed currently is and add 0.2 on top of it so it's going to be 0.4 and it's going to keep going every step of it so that will work um, for that let's also add um, so we're going to do movement we're going to do acceleration here we're going to do deceleration uh, here as well. So what we're going to want to do is just something very similar. We're going to want to do, I'm, I'm just going to copy and paste this, except I'm going to be checking for the S key because S is for WASD. S is typically like go backwards or reverse or stop or, or, or whatever. So here I'm going to do speed minus equals, and I'm going to change this to deck speed. There we go. And then we're going to do turning. Um, let's see, we're going to do, we're going to do turn left. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing, except what we're going to be checking is the A key. And what we're going to be doing here is that, uh, our direction is going to be changed. So how game maker handles direction is that direction starts at zero, which is facing to the right. And as you increase direction it moves counterclockwise so that means that uh a direction goes zero to zero to 360 technically zero to 359 but 360 to uh, 360 degrees so zero is facing to the right 90 is straight up and down uh 180 is facing to the left and then 270 is facing down and then 360 or zero is back to facing right again so since we're going to be turning left, we're going to be uh, basically, we're going to be increasing our direction. So we're going to do plus equals, and we're going to do our turn speed here. So that should work there. I'm just going to copy this and do turn right. And we're going to check for the, for the D key, and we're going to minus equals. So once we save this, if I pop open my room again and I drag this ship onto my screen and we hit play, we should be able to move now. Okay, we're moving, but it's not quite how I want it to move. So as I'm turning, I'm actually turning in circles. I just want to rotate the ship and keep going the uh, same direction. I also want the, the sprite to face the direction that we're going to be going. I don't want to be looping through that animation a bunch. So we've got some more work to do. So what we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to tweak this acceleration calculation here. So what we can do, and I don't want to change the direction. I want to change the... Let's solve this first problem here. So if we go back to our help manual here... Uh, I'm, I'm going to search for like movement. Uh, let me see if this helps movement. So here we go in any game movement position or paramount import importance. So it gives us a few things that we can do. Um, so we could move towards a point. We could calculate that. Um, motion add. Here we go. This function will modify the current direction and speed of the instance running the code, adding new values to current values. If you wish to change these values, you should be using motion set. Uh, so we want to add. So this is what we're gonna. This is what this is what's gonna work for us. So we can add. Uh, so rather than just increasing our speed by our acceleration, we can just add. Uh, the, the direction is gonna be wherever we we are facing, and then the speed that we're gonna add that motion to is our acceleration. So this should work perfect. So let's just. Uh, I'm just gonna comment this out for now and i'm going to just uh do motion 
add. And for the direction, we're gonna be using a variable called image angle. And then for the speed, we're gonna be adding our acceleration speed. So this should work a lot better. And then I think for the speed, I think this should, we just wanna slow down in like whatever direction we're going. So I'm, I'm gonna leave this how it is. I'm gonna get rid of that, that should work. Now for our turning left and turning right, I don't think we should be modifying direction directly. I think what we should be doing is we should be changing our image angle, which is the which is where our sprite is going to be facing. All right, so I think that this should work a lot better. So if we do image angle, and we save this, let's see what happens. So I'm not pressing anything. I can turn my ship, and I can move in a, in a direction, and I can thrust and go in different directions. Now it's acting like a space game. Perfect. But, oh, I, I can also back up, though. So, like, if I try to, to, to slow down, if I just hit S, it ends up going, like, in a different direction. That's not, uh, that's no good. So, let's fix some things here. So, first of all, I'm going to do animation control. I'm going to make it so it doesn't keep cycling through the, the animation frames. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set image speed, which is another built-in variable. I'm going to set that to zero, so it's not going to be cycling through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, also do set the sprite to use our uh, thruster frame. You know, so the the second frame of the sprite is where I added like my little booster trailer or, or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to do image index which is another built-in variable equals one so when you're discussing the when you're looking at the sprite if you look at these frames here it's what's it's zero indexed which means that this first frame is actually frame zero and the second frame is frame one so what i'm doing by setting image index to one is i'm setting it to the second frame so that should work, but I only want that to show if I'm pressing W. So what I can do then is I can add an else to this if statement here. And what this tells GameMaker is that, hey, if we are pressing W, then do everything here. But if we're not, I want you to run this code here. So what we're gonna do here is just set in image index back to zero. So there we go, we solved that issue. Let's test and run it really quick just to make sure. So there we go, we can see that we're only, there we go, that, that looks a lot better. So we're able to boost around and go certain directions. Cool. So there's there's also a big problem though, where we, we aren't, we aren't um, adding boundaries on our speed. So there's two big things that's going wrong here. First of all, I can just keep accelerating like infinitely. There's no cap on how, how fast I can go. Yes, I made this variable, but I'm not using it anywhere yet. And there's also another big problem is that when I'm, when I'm doing my, when, I, when I'm holding S to, to slow down, it's subtracting speed, but it's also possible to go negative speed and then start going backwards. So we're gonna need to add some controls here. So ensure our speed stays within bounds. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do our max speed if our speed is greater than or equal to, uh, we'll just do greater than. We'll just do greater than our max speed. Then what we're going to do here is we're just going to set speed directly to speed equals max speed. And so this will hard cap it. So if for some reason we're going like 50, but our max speed is only 10, it's going to hard cap it at 10. And we do this after our, our calculation here, because all this stuff doesn't really take effect until after, um, after this step event ends. So we should be good here. So limit max speed and then we also want to ensure we ensure we can't 
go negative speed, which really throws things off. So we're just going to do if speed is less than zero for any reason, speed equals zero. So that's all we're doing. So I'm just going to modify this comment. Ensure our speed does not exceed our maximum speed. There you go. I'm going to get rid of this comment here. Cool. So let's test this out. So now we should only be able to go a certain speed. And if I hit S to, to, to slow down, it shouldn't like go negative speed. So we fixed that. Cool. We've got movement. Now let's tweak these values. I think we're accelerating too fast. So I think I'm going to do 0.1. And I think for deck speed, I'm going to go 0 0.05 to slow down a little better. And I think our turn speed is pretty fast too. Maybe I might crank that down to three. There we go. So now it feels more like a space game, you know? And then, so now let me get going full blast and I'll try to slow down. There we go. So I can make that feature optional on like whatever ship I want. Now it's obviously easier to turn around, like it's faster to, to slow down by just turning around the opposite direction and then and then going full blast. But I think this is a good solution. So I'm pretty happy with that movement. That works how I how I expect it to. And uh, it feels like, you know, a, a space game. So in the next uh, video, I think we'll work on adding the ability to shoot stuff and i'm pretty happy with this so far i think we we did a good job here as far as making this feel like a a space game yeah i'm just having fun just dinking around this little this little small space area here so i can really boost it and this is just this is a lot of fun come on get there get back in frame there we go slow down Perfect. I like that. So what's cool, again, is that since I set these as variables, as I change my ship, so say I might have a bigger ship, I might, you know, I'm going to accelerate slower, I'm going to have a slower max speed, my turn speed's going to be slower, and my, and my it's going to be a lot harder to, to slow down. So bigger ships are going to have less mobility, and I can control those just by tweaking these four lines here as opposed to going in here and then changing everything there. So I'm pretty happy with this. We have our code commented with what we're trying to achieve. Um, acceleration. You know, we also want to set our sprite to use the thruster frame. Uh, we're not accelerating. So revert to uh, default frame. Uh, we've got deceleration. We're slowing down. We're turning left, turning right. We're ensuring our speed stays within bounds. I call this a success. So in the next video, we're going to add um, pew pew. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.